The following is a presentation of the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Some typical Syracuse weather during the college basketball season. We're here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. It's the Clemson Tigers and the Syracuse Orange on Raycom Sports. We've got two of the top scorers in the league. Tyus Battle making his 73rd straight start. And Marquise Reed over 1,000 points in a Clemson uniform. It is so great to have you with us for our game this evening. Tom Wormy along with the All-American from Duke. Mike Jaminski and Mike, we expect a very close game. In fact, in the last three games that the teams have played against one another, they've been decided by a total of five points. Well, and you look at it, Syracuse wants to keep the momentum of a great win at Notre Dame, and for Clemson, a brutal start to the schedule at Cameron, at Syracuse, home to Virginia, a very tough stretch. Mike, it's time for our innovative play. It is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. Well, one of the reasons why Syracuse won at uh, Notre Dame is because of this guy, Elijah Hughes. I mean, he was just rock solid from three, six of 13 from behind the arc, and uh, he was able to get open in a number of different ways. You see the drive inside right there, the pass behind, great look. Nobody able to get out in time to get a hand up on the shot, but he really gave them a big lift offensively. Career highs in scoring and rebounding for Hughes for the Orange. It's Syracuse and Clemson, ACC Basketball on Raycom Sports. Now time for the Food Lions starting lineups. The Clemson Tigers with their 10-4 record. But they've got a powerful player in the middle. Almost 7.5 rebounds per game for number 14, Elijah Thomas. Shoots 67% from the floor. That's the best for the ACC. And O'Shea Brissett across the way for the Orange, over 14 points per game and over eight rebounds for Brissett. That's sixth best in the conference. Talked about Elijah Hughes just a moment ago. 22 points, a career high and game high in the win Saturday at Notre Dame. He was six of 13, G-Man, from three-point distance. Yeah, and I really don't think you can expect uh, Syracuse to keep that up over the course of the season, but they were spectacular in that win and any road win is like a win and a half in this conference that's how you get to the top and uh you know it's going to be also interesting to see how clemson attacks this zone and talking to brad brownell before the game they're going to switch things up they'll have a guy in the middle um, they're going to try to attack the seams throw over the top a little bit uh, notre dame had some good success doing that although clemson's bigs aren't as athletic clemson played on saturday at number one duke and lost 87 68 Shot 43% in that game. And we're down by just seven at halftime when the Blue Devils took over in the second half and they followed it up with a win against Wake yesterday. That's Thomas underneath and an offensive foul. Yeah, just lowered the shoulder a little bit. Good call by the referee. And that's again the thing. They wanted to try to get guys in the short corner, which is right there. And uh, he hadn't beat, but he just had to he got that right arm. And Thomas. Last four games, it's not Tom, it's three, three games he's averaged four personal fouls. So staying on the floor is going to be an issue for him. Marek Dolajai has orbed that contact. He is starting his fourth straight game. Trying to go back door to Tyus Battle. Hughes elevates and misses. See, I think in Scar gets the rebound. I think he's going to be a big key tonight. He's one of their best three-point shooters. He also gets the other team's best offensive player. The head coach of the Syracuse Orange is the Hall of Famer, Jim Beheim. 43rd season, 33 times he's taken his program to the NCAA tournament. That includes 2003 and a national championship for the Orange as Hughes knocks that one out of bounds on the inbounds attempt by Clemson. The head coach of the Tigers is Brad Brownell. Coach Brownell in his ninth season. Second most wins in school history behind Cliff Ellis. He um, just got a six-year extension as well. A long three attempt that time by Reed. Battle. And uh, they look for Clemson to mix it up, too. They'll play a little bit of zone as, as well. The set ran into the double team, and Reed took it away, knocked it away, and back to the Tigers. One of the leaders in the league in steals as well. Very quick hands. Sims, turnaround. Does not get the bounce. 
batted around and taken by battle. See, that's the second look they've gotten in that exact same spot and have not made it one time a foul. Tyus Battle, they are calling that a two-point basket for Battle to get the orange on the board. Yeah, not, a, not a great three-point shooter, but, uh, you know, if you're Brad Brownell, you'd rather have a long, long two than a, than a three in that situation. 17 points at Notre Dame on Saturday for Battle. Eight of 17 from the floor. Mitchell has a three for the Tigers. Yeah, you're talking about, I mean, it's a shorter backcourt for Clemson, but... Uh, very experienced and uh, very so it's going to be fascinating battle between the, the both of the backcourts nobody shoots more threes for the tigers than mitchell and they create another turnover this is mitchell odd player break and he waits for reinforcements reed has a path wow. to the rim and he lays it in and jim Beheim's going to go to the bench on that he didn't like that call play at all and that's the one thing the other way you beat the zone is outrun it up the floor and uh, exactly what clemson did on the turnover Straight away, Dolajai, it's a three. Well, certainly, this is only his fifth make of the year. <laughs> Just That's his seventh fan, career yeah. make from three. Yeah, some found offense there. Dolajai. It's, it's, it's certainly something the other two centers aren't going to give you out <laughs> on the floor. Dolajai averages 3.2 points per game. He got tangled up with White, and the foul is against the Tigers. Here's Marquis Reed, and uh, look at this. Uh, the things just open up. Nice screen inside that time. He's still battling that uh, knee injury. And then uh, this is, like, you know, quite frankly, if you're going to play the percentages, Brad Barnett will live with him taking threes all night long. But, uh, you know, terrific knockdown on an open look. The Orange made 12 three-pointers at Notre Dame. That a season high on 29 attempts. In their most recent game, Battle had it knocked away. Another steal for the Tigers. Mitchell and Reed. Mitchell steps around the defender. Sabibe gets back to block it and save it. Hughes the other way. Around the defender and he lays it in. What a sequence for the Orange. Well, Sabibe too, and this is what he's going to give you. You get it out on the floor, he can uh, block shots. He can rebound, run the floor as well. And this is just tremendous pursuit from behind on the play, not giving up. It looked like he had an open shot. If he had gone up on the other side of the basket, he would have made the play, but he took it right into Sidibe, and then off of that, just getting out and running. Early two-point lead for the Orange in the eighth all-time meeting between the programs. First met back in 1960. That's a battle running into Scara, who got the worst of it and picked up the personal foul. Uh, and this is, again, what I talked about. This is what Scara faces every night. He will get the other team's best perimeter defender. He had a good size match matchup there, but um, you know, it also puts him, he expends a lot of energy on that end of the floor. Frank Howard on the inbounds for the Orange. Ted Valentine, Jeff Clark, Les Jones, our officiating crew this evening in Syracuse, New York on Raycom Sports. Nice crowd despite the inclement weather outside. Oh, guess you people are used <laughs> often, to that. <laughs> often on snow showers throughout the day. We saw sunshine, snow, sleet, rain. We got it all in about a span of 12 hours. And you and I live in Charlotte. And <laughs> yes. this, this would have paralyzed the city for like yep. a week. Now, I did spend some time here in the late 80s, early 90s, Mike. And it snowed just about every day. Here's Mitchell extending the range. It rattles out. Battle. Open for three. Reed walk it up. Despite the loss at Duke, Reed had 15 points, a team high, and made both of his three point attempts against the Blue Devils. Very competitive first half in that game, but uh, as Duke is very capable of doing. An explosive start to the second half just opened it up. Jemison with the shot clock running down. Can't convert. That's a, a theme here early on of Clemson's bigs unable to finish inside. Shots they should be finishing. CD Bay takes one way, goes the other around the defender. They came perilously close to uh, traveling 
on that, but the uh, 7-0 Syracuse run, and uh, so far uh, they didn't get much out of they didn't get much out of the production from the bigs in at Notre Dame, but uh, early on here, Joel Jai and Sidibe, nice offensive output. Sidibe only averages 2.7 points per game. Hughes, an emphatic rebound and outlet to battle, who collects right in front of Brad Brownell. Hughes, free, ripping the ropes for the orange. Yeah, you look at it, and this uh, this team, Syracuse, shoots a little, a little better on three on the road than they do at home, but have gotten off to a quick start, two of four so far. Scara turns around and hits. If he's, he's going to play in the zone, uh, that's either he's going to be spotting up for threes or they want to get him at the free throw line. It's just that Brad Brownell does not want to give a constant look to how they attack the zone. Scara stops a 10-0 orange run. Battle tried the circus move, hit the deck. Mitchell against three defenders. Scar is there. Sabibe gets a piece of it. What hustle he has shown in the first half as the pass goes through the hands of Hughes. Wow, this is what Elijah Hughes has done. He's been on a nice run. And when you're a player and you see a big basket like that, threes are a layup. Up by five on Raycom Sports. Time for our Carolina Ford dealers. Keys to the game with Mike Jaminski. Well, Tom, for Clemson, the thing you really want to do is take care of the basketball. They have a negative assist to turnover ratio as a team, so not a great ball handling ball club. They've got to get shots in this game. And uh, for Syracuse, they thought their ball movement and player movement was excellent, both excellent in the game at Notre Dame. They want to continue to work on that and, and get better at it. That win at Notre Dame, 72-62 for the Orange to improve their record to 10-4. and four. They are 8-2 here at the Dome this season. They only managed to get to the free throw line five times at Notre Dame, but still won the game. Brissett was 4-4 four for four from the line. And didn't shoot one time until under the four-minute mark in the second half. Yeah, took quite an oddity. And it just they were shooting the three so well that they just, you know, they weren't doing a lot inside, so it wasn't that opportunity. Howard went for the steal. Reed trying to get out of a congested area in the corner. Shot clock is at five. Mitchell takes a peek at that clock, needs to shoot it and does. The battle is right on him. Shot clock violation. See, the problem, the problem is, like, talking to Brad Brownell, that you can practice all you want against the zone, but your practice squad isn't as long and as athletic as big as Syracuse's starters. Now, that's, that happens in most cases, but it's really tough to replicate this zone and work against it. Sidibe recovers, goes back to battle. Howard, catch and release! Frank Howard! Uh, Howard's a guy they need to get going. He's had some physical problems of his own, missed a lot of the early season with a foot problem. Um, hasn't his, his numbers are down from last year, but uh, if he can get healthy in conference play, that's going to be a huge lift for them. 12th made three of the season for Howard. Syracuse shooting 56% so far in the first half. Clemson down around 27%. Thomas, power dribble and turnaround. Yeah, that was that was great. You know, there was good spacing. I didn't think the play was going anywhere. The ball was going around the perimeter. But Thomas has been able to establish himself inside with good positioning. Dolajai off the glass. Calculates the angle for two. He may be starting to blossom as an offensive player, averaging three and a half coming in but has already knocked down a three and, and puts the ball on the deck from about 18 feet. Scara came up short, produces a run out potentially for the Orange and Hughes. Great help that time. Mitchell against two defenders. Dolajai's back there, so was Battle. I mean, if you're, you know, you gotta, you gotta pull that back out. Uh, you can't press that situation. 
So there is a timeout on the court with the Orange up 17-9. Frank Howard into the box score, lining up the three and knocking it down. Well, that Syracuse shot the three at South Bend, uh, 12 of 29, and that continues here tonight as well, or early on, and uh, right there is Frank Howard finishing it off, and Tom, they're uh, three of five right now from behind the arc. And you can see for the season, the orange, 31% from three-point real estate, 13th in the conference, 14th in field goal percentage. And they also struggle from the free throw line as well, but not so far tonight. They are continuing their hot shooting from a week ago against Notre Dame on Saturday. And Hughes continues his pace. Elijah Hughes with those 22 points, and he made six threes against Notre Dame in 37 minutes of action. He got his first double-double as well for the redshirt junior and transfer from East Carolina who is currently on the bench for the Orange. Orange has won two in a row in the series. Two and one against the Tigers here at the Dome. Sidibe, offensive foul. That was Sims who hit the deck. Now, you watch that play, and when you run a pick and roll, you have to have two players to honor offensively. Sidibe, you can see they're just letting him go. Got maybe passed into that offensive foul. But, uh, you know, they're not, you know, they're going to lock in on the scores and let those guys continue to see if they can score. Jim Beheim, second most wins in Division I history behind Coach K. His son Buddy wears number 35. He's into the ball game for the Orange. This is Thomas. Battle came over with the help. Volleyballed around. Tipped and grabbed by Carey. The referees are calling the same game at both ends. It's tough to get a shot inside. Neither team has shot a free throw to this point in the game. We talked about that earlier in the Notre Dame game. Jalen Carey into the lineup, the freshman from the Bronx, New York, for the Orange. And they Played really, 11 minutes against Notre Dame. Yeah, they really love him. Uh, defensively, tough kid. Comes right in off the bench, ready to go. Brissette, shot clock winding down. Brissette at the rack. You know, battles a lot more demonstrative offensively, but I really like Brissette. I mean, he just lets the game come to him. Uh, doesn't force things, but is very productive. First basket of the game for O'Shea Brissett. And a 10-point lead for the Orange midway through this first half. Tom Wormy, Mike Janitsky, and our outstanding Raycon Sports production crew. And Sidibe, the contact and the foul. There's a look. We talked about ball movement, and uh, that's how you get yourself open. Right? It's a little brush screen right there by Battle at the top. Freezes man up. Very, uh, very subtle play, but uh, it's, basketball is at its best when it's simple. And, uh, Jim Beheim, and I thought he came, Thomas came close to shuffling his feet before that contact. 14 points for Thomas in the loss at Duke with 7 of 9 from the floor. He's really healthy for the first time in a while in you know, his career. Has been, he's been banged up, but... Uh, He's, I think he's lost some weight this year. He's in much better shape, runs the floor better. And after that first foul, they gave him some minutes on the bench just to buy some time for him in the first half. Six foot nine and 245 pounds, Elijah Thomas, and the senior from Dallas, Texas. Pittsburgh has an early lead on Louisville and other ACC action tonight. There are five games. The two new coaches in the league going against each other, and uh, Jeff Capel and Chris Mack. Carey driving, whistle as Reed was reaching in. And it is on Reed. First personal for Reed with 9-12 on the game clock. Substitution, John Newman comes in. Tyson to the bench. Hello, Newman. There he's in the game. 
How did I know you were going to say that? <laughs> we'll see if Newman can deliver for the Tigers. <laughs> Stop worked, it now. Bayheim for three, G-Man. You worked on that all afternoon. But it, I think Buddy Bayheim, he's, he's had a little difficulty getting his shot off, um, especially in, in league play. And I think he's, he's really a, a young man who needs to hit his first one to get comfortable. He did have a career-high 12 against St. Bonaventure. Dolajai leads the break. Brissett rocking the rim. Clemson didn't get back defensively that time. And uh, what a nice, what a, what a great fast break. Dolajai running it. Dolajai just lulled them to sleep, G-Man, and then fed Brissett. Well, like a great, like a great point guard, you just kind of sit there and wait and uh, why? get the steal right here. How about one of your bigs being able to bring it out of the backcourt? Now watch him look around and stop. Wait, the back cut right there. Terrific basketball play. That is the definition of a soaring jam by O'Shea Brissett, the sophomore from Ontario, Canada. And he's got four points in the first half. How about the influx of, how about the influx of players from Canada over the last five to ten years and uh, Steve Nash having a big part of playing that. He's director of basketball in Canada. And, you know, a lot of these kids grew up watching him play and gave them inspiration. Brissett also made three three-point baskets on seven chances in the win against Notre Dame. And the 19 points, double-double. He's got four double-doubles on the season and 17 in his young Syracuse career in his sophomore season. It's a 19-5 overall run. For the orange. So what happens is the, the more that uh, Syracuse leads, the more compact that zone gets. Battle meeting Thomas at the rim. First on battle. Thomas back to the free throw line for the Clemson Tigers, trailing 21-10 and 8-16 to go in our first half on Raycom Sports. Tigers to the Sweet 16 last year. Here's a message from CPI Security. Get the best security and smart home solutions all in one app from CPI Security, the official security partner of ACC Basketball. No Luke Keekly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> on, him standing out my, outside my front door. <laughs> Tigers make a substitution as White comes in. You should certainly congratulate the Clemson football program while you're talking about football, Mike, and their wow. national championship second in three years as they dominate Alabama. You know, Pulling for the league, but I was not expecting that. No, not many I, were. That was uh, that was just being taken out to the woodshed. Uh, Debo Sweeney might have expected it, but national title for the Tigers. Look at battle, body control midair. Well, there's not a lot of size out there right now for uh, for Clemson, and uh, this, the Orange have been attacking the basket at will, half court and then full court. Orange football program also won its bowl game and won 10 games this year. We should commend them as well. Shot clock is inside of 10 for the Tigers. It's too strong. Skara retrieves it and back out to midcourt. See that number 31 out there at midcourt in honor of Pearl Washington. He passed away just a couple of years ago. Yeah, tragic teammate when he was a rookie in the NBA of mine at the Nets. Just a legend in the New York playground uh, coming up through high school. Honored and remembered at midcourt here on Jim Beheim Court inside the Carrier Dome. Brissett. Newman grabs the rebound. Tigers won 25 games a season ago for Brad Brownell. Mitchell. Long distance. Carry. Going to try to go all the way in the paint. Offensive foul. And that's a freshman play. You, you get four players step back.
ACC, five games on the slate. Virginia Tech has the lead against Georgia Tech. And Med Hill with 13 points to lead the way. Pittsburgh and Louisville. Trey McGowan's into double digits with 10 as the Panthers have the lead. And then the two late games, Virginia Boston College, Miami, Florida State, about 30 minutes away from tipping off. Uh, kind of surprising to me, Tom, that Virginia Tech isn't getting more love nationally. I mean, top, you know, top 10 team, number nine. Um, you know, Buzz Williams has really got it going up in Blacksburg, and it, just nobody seems to be talking about him. I think the other one that's in the you know in the top 15, the North Carolina State, too, although losing to North Carolina last night. ACC with six teams in the top 15 in the country. That's the first time that's ever happened in conference history. They dump it low to Thomas, who was able to score the bucket. Howard, top of the key. Crossing the six-minute threshold of the first half. Dolajai. I think that qualifies as a heat check for Marek Dolajai, although he missed on that attempt. Yeah, well, he was, uh, again, a pick-and-pop situation. I don't know how many more of those Jim Beheim is going to let him shoot in this particular game. Scara for three. Contested by Brissett. Hughes the miss. And this is Reed. We have not said Reed a whole lot so far, Mike. No, and uh, also an opportunity. I think the Syracuse has settled for some early long threes in their last few possessions. Just two points so far for Marquise Reed, the leading scorer for the Tigers. Averages close to 20 per game and fourth best in the conference with the shot clock at six. Scara, too strong off the backboard. Oh, that's about, again, a four or five opportunities layups missed by Clemson. Uh, it was a great move by Scara, but he had to finish. Tigers lead the overall series four to three. Teams played in early March of last year. And it was a win for the Orange here at the Dome, 55-52. This is Brissett behind the line. See, that's a, that's a situation. Brissett should have taken Thomas off the dribble. There is Thomas. And he just ran out. I mean, he got a hand up on the jump shot and uh, just ran out after the play. Normally, you'd like your big coming back in for rebounding. But uh, Jim Beheim not liking what he's seeing right now. And he's talking about that. He's talking about transition defense. Elijah Thomas rocking the stanchion. We've got a six-point game inside the dome. Brought to you by the Honda Dealers of the Carolinas for the Syracuse Orange. They will also play the Clemson Tigers in the last regular season game for both teams. Well, and already uh, the Duke game already a sellout. Well over 34,000 people will be here. And, uh, earlier this year, they played one of those games against Georgetown, which was one of the largest viewed games in, uh, in, in college basketball up to that point. I'm going to mention something I missed. I'm talking about top 25 teams. Florida State, of course, in that group as well. Thomas on the bench with his eight points. That was a win against Georgetown, 72-71. And Battle hit the winning jumper, Mike, with two and a half seconds left against Patrick Ewing and the Hoyas. It's really nice to see those old Big East rivalries continue, you know, especially for you and in your heart to see Georgetown and St. John's and these guys play each other. Shot clock's at two. Howard beats it. Yeah, just so frustrating when you play 29 seconds of great defense and a uh, guy just comes up and trumps you with a better shot. Nothing wrong with that defensive position for a Clemson. Syrac Turkeys have gone over three and a half minutes, Mike, without scoring, and then right back at you, Sims. And, uh, not bad, 40% from three, but you see how far out that Clemson is initiating their offense and uh, where their shots are coming from, aside from Elijah Thomas. Brissett misfires. Trap went up high for the rebound. Orange now 3 of 11 from three-point distance. That is Reed who got knocked to the deck. 
Got that brace on the yeah. left knee. And then he had to elevate off that knee, and I just don't know that the elevation is there yet. That's his fourth game back after missing three games because of the knee injury. Reset with position, off the glass, and a chance at the old school three-point play. See, that's where their size comes into play. I mean, they just cleared things out. Reset at 6'8". He's got position inside. Here's the look. Here's the right over the top. Beautiful pass inside. You know, Mitchell is, is giving away a good four inches in there and just nothing he could do. Seventy one wins as the head coach of the Tigers in ACC play. That is the most in school history for Coach Brownell, but a lot of work to do tonight against the Orange inside the dome with Brissett at the free throw line. They've done well to get back into this ball game. Syracuse led by as many as 12 in this first half, Mike. If they can, you know, if, if Clemson can defend and reel it in and make this maybe a four-point game going into half, I, I think you're sitting at a reasonable position. Trap. Stolen by the Orange and Hughes. Gathers it. Howard. Battle put it on the floor. Up to the rim and good for Battle. Well, Trap dribbled himself into a corner trap, and that is death against this zone defense. Results in a turnover. Almost looked like Battle wasn't expecting that pass. So unusual for a score. Six points for Battle in the first half. This is Reed. Dumped it off to Sims. Foul is against the orange. It was Hughes who went down and the disbelief from the Syracuse bench. The replay, and yeah, I, I, I don't know. He, he had picked up his dribble already. He looked like he was falling down. Questionable call. I mean, you heard the reaction from the crowd in the background. Felt like, Tom, this was a good time to catch a team on the road when the students are out. Um, this crowd, I think you can sense, isn't the normal raucous Carrier Dome crowd. You, you bail Reed out on a three-point shot with a foul. You know what I'm saying? It always felt like the, you know, if you're going to play a road game early in the ACC, it's better when the students aren't here. And uh, you know, that's that's a ball you just have to get a hand up and contest and not foul. But he hit him on the elbow. Well, Mike Syracuse took advantage of that Saturday at Notre Dame and got the win on the road. Our coverage of ACC basketball being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome the men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the world. So proud to have you with us, and we hope you're enjoying the broadcast. Well, right now we talked about the back backcourt, Tom, and uh, for Reed and Mitchell combined two of nine from the floor. That's got to turn around in the second 20 minutes for Clemson to get back in this. Despite that miss, Marquise Reed is tops in school history, almost 87% for his career from the free throw line. And that is best in Tiger basketball history. Minute and a half to go in the first half, G-Man. Good defensive possession for Clemson right now. Battle. Weak sound. Not a great shot. I didn't even know Battle thought he was fouled on the play, but uh, Battle is still on the Clemson side of the court in front of that bench. Oh uh, yeah, it's a, it's just the ball got away from Reed. So Reed to the bench for the Tigers. Senior from Landover, Maryland. The transfer from Robert Morris. Reset. Challenged by Thomas and a foul on the play. Mid-air contact. Well, you hate to see that. It's his second foul, so you have to, you know, get him out. It would have been nice to get Thomas into the second half with only that one foul. 68% from the line on the season for O'Shea Brissett. Coming up on the Hardys Halftime Report, we'll take a look at the early stories around the ACC as conference play gets rolling.
All that plus highlights and analysis. The Hardy's halftime report will take a look at Tuesday night. Wins by North Carolina and Duke. And Zion Williamson, 30 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists. Robust stat line for the young man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I would say, you know, never been done by a freshman, but the only other person to do it in Duke history, Art Heyman, back in the early 60s. I never even came close to five assists, so I would have <laughs> never challenged that. Wasn't going to suggest that, G-Man, so. Final minute of play in our first half. Dolajai off his shin right to Scara. Hughes, another board. Eight-point lead for the Orange. This is Howard from the corner. Dolezal on the weak side. Able to get it back. 20 seconds on the clock for Syracuse. Yeah, the, 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 first, the first shot defense, very good, but uh, you got to get a body on people, and uh, Dolezal has really given them a good half so far. Brissett is the leading scorer for the Orange with seven. This is battle for three. Front rim and Dolezal against Thomas. Bounces high in the air, and that will do it for the first 20 minutes. Syracuse shoots 50% in the first half, 32% for the Tigers, 30-22 at the half. The halftime report from Syracuse after this. BC Basketball is being brought to you by GEICO, saving people money for over 75 years. By Gatorade, win from within by your Carolina Ford dealers. By Bojangles, it's bow time. And by CPI Security, official security partner of the ACC. On Monday, Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers celebrating that national championship with a big victory, 44-16 against the number one team in the country, the Alabama Crimson Tide there in Santa Clara. Second national title in the last three years. And Trevor Lawrence threw three TD passes. Speaking of college football, one of the all-time greatest. Not only football, but also lacrosse, especially here at Syracuse. Yep, uh, Jim two, Brown. Two, two sports that mean a very lot to, a lot to this. Uh, and uh, he played in the Cotton Bowl in 57. But, uh, you know, people do, I don't think people even know about A lot of people don't know about how great a lacrosse player he was as well. And uh, he got 1,000 yards a season when getting 1,000 <laughs> yards actually meant something. Yep, the Cotton Bowl was the semifinal win for the Tigers this season. Our first half stats are brought to you by Nicoderm, G-Man. Yeah, and uh, Syracuse shooting the ball. You know, they're 3 of 14 from 3, 10 of 12 from two. So what does that tell you? I mean, maybe scrap the three a little bit till you get your offense going, <laughs> attack the rim. You're going to put some pressure on Thomas, maybe get him to pick up that third, fourth foul. But uh, I wouldn't see a lot of, I'd be surprised if I saw early threes from the Orange. Very balanced scoring from the Orange of the six players you got in the box score. Five of them had five or more points led by O'Shea Percet with his seven points. Just one rebound for the leading rebounder for the Orange this season in Brissett. And Syracuse will have the basketball to start the second half. Orange 7-2 and two with a halftime lead this year. And they've got it by eight against the visiting Clemson Tigers. The first of two meetings between the teams this season. Saw that the Orange shot 50% of the first half, well above their season average of 43% from the floor as a team. Dolajai, the loft inside the Brissett. Ball's going against Syracuse. An offensive foul that time on the push off and uh, a nice defensive possession to start the second half for the Tigers. Said very compact, trying to defend the paint, entice. Syracuse into taking long jump shots. Orange led by as many as 12 in that first half. That is the quick hand play from Battle, and he's able to swipe it. That's the length of Battle to the arms and a couple of turnovers, and 
And Scar knew it. it. You know, they he had a layup if he hadn't hit that one, and it just knocked it into Mitchell's face. So it will be Syracuse basketball. The Orange made it all the way to the regional semifinals of the NCAA tournament a season ago before losing to Duke. 69-65. They had three wins, including a win in the first four to get to that position in the tournament. Just taking care of some moisture on the floor. Back in 2016, they made it all the way to the Final Four, but lost in the semifinals to North Carolina in Houston. Whistle on the attempted drive as Hughes hit the floor. Yeah, Sims tried to come over and make the play. That's a good back door. So you can see the uh, the size of Elijah Hughes. He's able to absorb contact inside. Not only knock down threes. Realize how you know, kind of sneaky big that Syracuse is. You know, with battled with the long arms and Hughes, the size that he has, and even Howard at his position and Brissett. Uh, I mean, that's a long team. 74% on the season from the stripe for Hughes coming off a career game at Notre Dame. In points and rebounds and three-pointers made. The lead now 10 for the Orange. Early stages of the second half and they're getting the ball back. Right now Brad Brownell getting a little antsy over on the sideline. This is a crucial little stretch another score and he may call a timeout to try to calm things down a little bit 12 point lead is very big against his zone Dolajai steps back battle was in there Brissett Scaro Reed looks like the foul's going against the Tigers Sims will get it second personal on Sims we see him. Uh, he was undercutting right here on the blockout. Got the push off, and there's the roll. And he really didn't even need that. He was going to come up with the rebound anyway. This is Howard baseline. He'll rattle it home. Yeah, I really love. You know, there are teams that on the underneath out of bounds plays throw the ball back just to get it in. I love teams that look to score immediately, and that was a one pass and shoot. Dolajai has picked up the personal his first. And here's the look and uh, go with Dolajai. It's a little Statue of Liberty play over on the sideline. Dolajai, the sophomore from Slovakia, country just south of Poland. Zone extended up pretty high. Almost everybody will love the, love the free throw line. Reset muscles that one away from Thomas. Not an easy thing to do. Reset had it knocked away by Reed. And then Sims went to the floor. And it looked like the Tigers were granted a timeout in that instance. So there will be a timeout on the floor with 17.55 here in the second half. Thirty-four twenty-two. our count here in the second half of the Orange in front of the Tigers who are shooting just 31% for the game. And Marquise Reed has just four points. You see how far below they are from their season average. Missed three games with that knee injury. This is his fourth game back. Well, so far, uh, the opponents for Syracuse have shot 28%. From three in this in the dome and 38 percent on the on the in arenas. So you know this, like I said, for people visiting here, a tough place to shoot and not a great feat of the post that time. Mike, you always talked about from your playing days the depth perception and the change of environment playing in a building like this in a domed venue, especially in in uh, you know at the baskets in the back. It goes so far back and so far up. You it's, you lose. Depth perception, and uh, I, I just I like shooting in arenas much more than domes. Although, you know, this is this not quite as bad as a uh, football stadium, but uh, 
Again, another good position forces a long, tough jump shot for Howard. Quick ball movement, right back to Reed. A shot offline. Sims, fresh shot clock. They use very little of it and get a three from Trap. It's one of the few offensive rebounds that uh, Clemson has gotten in this game, and uh, that invariably leads to a wide open look at a three. First points for Clyde Trapp, the sophomore from Eastover, South Carolina. 14th made three of the season for Trapp, and the whistle halts play. Here's the look. This is just Reed trying to get going, but again, those long rebounds, you have to track them down, and uh, that's as good a look as you're going to get against this defense. Mike, in the last three games, it's been the shooting by the Orange that's been the difference. 48% from the floor in those last three games for Syracuse, and also holding opponents to just 54 points per game in those last three. Thomas with a emphatic rejection. Uh, Clemson's going to have to step on the gas pedal a little bit to get to 54, 55 right now. Thomas in the top 10 in career blocks at Clemson. Came into the game with 129. 10th on the list. Battle. Difficult shot. One of the contact was not granted the foul. Yeah, see, I mean, you, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to buy that foul out that far from the basket. Reed pumps up the three, and it's all net for Marquise Reed. Oh, a little six-point swing right there, and uh, all of a sudden Clemson's feeling a little momentum. And uh, Jim Beheim wants to slow things down some. So Reed hitting the three-pointer. Stepping back. He's open. And the Tigers crawling back in it. Thomas and the Clemson Tigers clawing their way back in. And this is his favorite shot, turning over that left shoulder. With the nice speed here, showing that he can score with his offhand as well. We talked about him being in better shape, running the floor and finishing and cleaning things up inside. One of the better shot blockers in the ACC. Thomas with eight points. That leads the way for the Clemson Tigers. Marquise Reed starting to get back into the flow of things as well. He's got seven points and just made his first three of the game. If you remember, Old Dominion was down 10 at halftime in that game and came out. And uh, I think that uh, Jim Bayheim needed they've had a two timeouts already. Feels like his team might be a little bit sluggish right now. Brissett lost the handle in the paint. Thomas had it, tried to save it. Could not do it on the end line. And uh, boy, Elijah, those, those are the hustle rebounds that you lose that, you know, you obviously you want to get. But uh, they just ran into one another and got it knocked off his foot. Great effort to try to save it. Syracuse working on a three-game winning streak, and they've won two in a row here at the Dome against St. Bonaventure and Arkansas State. And they've won eight of their last ten games. Yeah, but you know what, Tom? you got you got to validate that road win at Notre Dame with a home win here. Howard. Over Thomas, who fouled him. Third uh, personal. Was, oh, they Reed. gave it to Reed. Yeah, they Correction. gave it to Reed underneath. Yes. Would have been third on Thomas. It'll be Reed now with his third. Howard oh, really solid at the free throw line at 82%. Just two of their last 18 three-point attempts between these two teams. Uh, you can see how Jim Baham's trying to wake his team up by getting the pressure up the court, and it results in a turnover. Clemson really caught unawares that time and just got sped up. Some instruction in no uncertain terms from Brad Brownell. Pass near his bench. Pass the ball to the guy with the same uniform on. <laughs> Dolezal. It's a three. And second three of the game. 
Here's that pressure again and another turnover. Dolajai had made three threes all season. Mikey's got two tonight against the Tigers. Well, this team, you talked about the winning streak. It all started when Dolajai was inserted into the starting lineup. And uh, they, that's the thing, you know, maybe he can do that and uh, certainly do it better than the other two centers that are, are playing in this game. Dolajai now with eight points. Hughes contested by Thomas. Back to Howard. Battle's getting a little itchy to get something up here. He hadn't shot the ball in this half. Hughes with just one shoe on, he's got a three. Doesn't need two shoes. <laughs> it must be the shoes. <laughs> I think that's been used already. <laughs> here it is. Uh, well, he lost it after the shot, so that didn't really count. <laughs> Don't see that every day, and Tyus Battle allows himself a smirk after that play. Uh, this whole run has come since that timeout and the full court pressure by Syracuse. Sims going for the jam for the Tigers. Much better job of handling the pressure and throwing over the top. Brissette thought about it. Uses into double digits now. He's got 10. The only player in our game to double figures. 13th time this season, number 33 in white has gotten to double figure scoring. Dolajar cleans up the miss from battle and a fresh shot clock. It's just again the, the perimeter, the length of shot, the long rebound. going to be Clemson basketball on the battle drive. See what happened here. They avoided the corners. Good pass up front the ball. The ball only touched the floor one time in that whole possession. Battle. The battle, frankly, battles upset that he got fouled because the ball's going to be out of the out of, out of it was a, a smart play by Clemson, and that just frustrated Battle. He saw a dunk in his near future. Foul was on Trap, his second. Junior from Edison, New Jersey, Tyus Battle. Started every game this season, Mike, his 73rd straight start. Fourth in the conference in minutes after leading the nation in minutes a season ago. He played not... This is a very active zone, and I'm not saying that it's not taxing, but I think it allows your players to play longer minutes. Shot clock at two for Hughes. The set tried to come over the top. Yeah, good, that was a good call by the officials, and really looked like a, a lack of awareness of where the clock was that time, the shot clock. Eleven point lead for the Orange. Thomas help came over from Hughes, but Thomas beat them both. Well, the, the help came late. He turned away from where the help was coming from, and Dolajai just uh, just the uh, pockets are a little too close together to battle with uh, Thomas inside. And uh, boy, just a, a, a great answer from. Trap has come in and given them some uh, a big lift here in the second half. Battle now has eight points. Foul coming up on the play. Thomas has gotten into double digits with ten for the Tigers. Battle picked up the foul, second personal on Battle. Sidibe comes in for Marek Dolajai. Uh, Dolajai getting a nice ovation from the crowd and well-deserved. Eight points, couple of three-point baskets for Dolajai. Sims, hey. Thomas trying to collaborate. Brissett knocked it away right to Mitchell. Howard. Hey. 
Right, methodical. He got five. Yeah, a smart play by him, and you know he's he's more of a shooting guard than a point guard, but he got a good screen up top. It caused a switch, and Thomas just really couldn't stay with him on, on that strong right hand. Couple of free throws already attempted in the game for Frank Howard. Just attempts number 12 yes, and 13. So he's only been in the line 14 times this season. But as Mike mentioned, he did miss the first four games of the year with a lower body injury. Well, and, and all of the preseason, and that's the most important thing. And that's where you you know you get your conditioning and get your basketball legs underneath you. So it wasn't so much the games; it was everything before that in the uh, in the fall. Reed, the turnaround. Yeah, they've tried putting him in that free, low, free throw line position right at the middle of the zone, but it has just been a, sh a tough shooting night for Reed. Seven points in the game for Marquise Reed. We highlighted him at the top of the broadcast and at the top of the scouting report and through the opposition against the Tigers. 19.6 points per game is the average, but just seven so far for Reed. Scara. Mitchell whips it low. Too high for Thomas. You know, it, it just, I don't know how many, what the percentage is, but I just do not like one-handed passes. You know, he tried to make a home run play that time. Make an, make an easy pass in that situation. Tigers now with 15 turnovers. They had 19 against Duke. Two players, now three on the floor. Sadibe has the basketball. Thomas is on top of him. We'll sort it out when we come back to the Dome in just a moment. Score at Notre Dame, but tonight, eight points, G-Man. Yeah, showing different facets of his game, the ability to put it on the floor in the free throw line. Nice job battling inside against Thomas with the steal right there. Comes up with the offensive re rebound to recycle the play. And then a couple of bombs from three to really lift this offense. Hadn't scored in double figures. So you just see the lack of production at Notre Dame from this trio right here. But uh, Dolajai much better tonight. Sidibe giving a nice contribution. Chuku has not played. So Chuku on the bench. Dolajai also there. Again, he has not seen the court tonight. And Sidibe is at the free throw line. Well, how about this uh, line for Dolajai? Tom, um, eight points. Two of four from three, three rebounds, four assists, no turnovers, and a block. He had scored nine points against St. Bonaventure, but was held scoreless at Notre Dame. His teammate Barama Sidibe, the sophomore. Well, that was right, you know, all I think two of them fouled out, and one of them was close to fouling out against the Irish, so foul issues there. Dolajai had only made three three-point baskets on the season coming into the evening. And he's cashed it in twice from three-point real estate. Shot clock is at eight for Reed. Mitchell. Scara. Thomas on the weak side. Too strong off the glass, but there was a whistle as Thomas was doing some hard work underneath that rim for the Tigers. Yeah, Sidibe just, uh, he used, uh, he, Thomas just used his girth and strength that time to clear out some space. Uh, he's the only orange jersey in the area, and he comes up with the rebound. Just hard work on the offensive glass. You know that when that shot comes from the opposite side, more than not, if it's going to miss, it's going to miss long, and that's exactly where he was. So Thomas now just two of five from the line. Another team uh, lighting it up at the free throw line right now. Oh. 
Tigers shoot 73% as a team from the free throw line. Eighth in the conference. One of two from Thomas. Battle. Pulls up on Stara. David Scarra has his second personal foul with 10.48 on the clock in the second half. Yeah, you know, Tommy, you get a guy to pull up like that and shoot a floater, you can't foul him. You just make him make a tough shot. Uh, Sidibe was coming up to set a screen, and that really cleared everything out on the right-hand side. But Battle didn't think he could get all the way to the rim. First free throws of the night for Tyus Battle. 79% from the line for battle on the season. Dolajai, very productive in a starting role tonight against the Tigers. All of a sudden, this lead slowly starting to stretch out. Trap from the free throw line. Big basket. Once again, battle and Scara collide. Scara's third personal foul. We talked about it, that he's... Just two points from Scara, and he's a player that Brad Brownell didn't even think he would have in the lineup this season, Mike. Yeah, it was very close to going back to his homeland and uh, playing uh, professionally in Croatia and, you know, had, had a crisis of conscience in the, in the middle of the summer. He called Coach Brad Brownell. He says, do you still have a scholarship open? And he said, yeah, we haven't filled it yet. They were looking for somebody, but they got him back. Nice high-low action that time. Third personal on O'Shea Brissett will put Thomas at the free throw line. Transfer from Texas A&M in his third year in the Clemson program. So the Tigers trying to stay within striking distance of the orange. Syracuse is led by as many as 13 in the second half after leading by eight at halftime. Approaching the 10 minute mark of the second half, Tom Wormy, Mike Jaminski and our outstanding Raycom Sports production crew with you from the Carrier Dome. So glad that you've joined us tonight. Shot clock is at five for Hughes. Trying to shake Scara. Hughes stumbled Travel. down and he traveled. Yeah, and remember we talked about one of the things that uh, they wanted uh, Syracuse was working on, ball movement. Uh, that, that was really kind of a stagnant possession. And um, Hughes just got caught having to dribble with the shot clock on his, ba on his back. Tigers will host Virginia on Saturday and the Syracuse Orange welcomes Georgia Tech to the Dome on Saturday those are the next games on the schedule for these teams you can see Clemson and Virginia right here on Raycom Sports Scar, should have, I mean, Scar was wide open that time Reed should have given him up a good defensive play inside by Sidibe Hughes, curl, and shot. Well, <laughs> I thought they'd take their foot off the gas from three, but I guess not. But, uh, again, just catching in rhythm, not putting the ball on the floor. Good screen. 13 points for Hughes. Sidibe went down in the paint. The reason he, he was thrown down, he didn't just go down that time. <laughs> Here's that look. Uh, just talking about ball movement. Much better, better ball movement this time and player movement to give up the screen. And uh, Clemson late stepping out to get a hand up. And Hughes got a, a good look. 
Three of six on three-point field goals. He's now made 39 this season on 105 chances. And both of those numbers lead this Orange roster. Howard. <laughs> Indecision in midair. Uh, not a great shot. You know, still early in the shot clock. Trap. Tried to bank it in. Mitchell there for the rebound. A subsequent tip by Sims. See, that's what happens when you surprise your team with a shot. Something good usually happens down the other end for the other team. And, I, you know, just Syracuse was not expecting Howard to take that shot. Probably not that one either, but he makes it. Not a long two. Eight minutes to go in regulation. Orange up 53, 38. Trap. Front rim. Followed his miss and rolled it in. A counterclockwise swirl to the bottom of the net for Trap. I can't and I can't believe that you know he's come in and given them a really good lift here in the second half. They put him in the middle of that zone. He's got seven points, Mike. CD Bay. Who he stole that move from. On the pivot. A whistle stops play with the Orange up by 13, and we'll be back after a word from your local ACC station. A game summary for summaries of other ACC games. Go to the ACC.com. I mean, the number that jumps out there, Tom, is we talked about it. The big key for Clemson taking care of the basketball. 16 turnovers already, still eight minutes to go. And almost 40% of Clemson's offense off points off turnovers. And on the road, you just you, you, you can't you, you can't give away those easy points. And a team that really doesn't put up 80 or 85 points a game. Duke scored 27 points off 19 Tiger turnovers on Saturday. See Bay at the free throw line for the Orange. Don't forget, coming up Saturday, Virginia at Clemson or Pittsburgh at NC State. Well, how about how about how about that start at Duke, at Syracuse, home against Virginia? Virginia, by and the you, way, has won ten in a row on and, the road. And you play a team that plays a completely different style, and then you see offensive fouls, Sims on the uh, screen, illegal screen. But Virginia plays that pack line defense that's almost it's half man, half zone. They help so well that it's really tough to get to the rim, and you're going to have to shoot well from the outside. So the foul was on Amir Sims. You see him going to the bench. That's five on him. So Sims disqualified. Nine points for Sims on four of six shooting. Also chipped in with three rebounds, but his night is over. And he's on that Tiger bench. Trey Jemison is into the game for the Tigers. 55 in orange. They're set over the top. Scara tried to get away from Battle, who bumped in on him. Yeah, almost, almost better in that situation to just take the turnover and get back and set your defense up rather than put the other team at the free throw line, stop the clock. Tigers in the bonus, Orange in the double bonus. Scara at the line. 70% of the season. Last year, Brad Brownell's team, 25 wins tied a school record. 11 ACC wins, Mike. That set the school record. But they are in serious jeopardy of starting out the season and the ACC portion of the schedule, 0-2, with the Cavaliers coming to town this weekend. Well, um, you know, the last uh, the last year or so have been pretty good for Clemson basketball and, and football, obviously. Six forty-five to go in regulation. Reed. Trying to cut through that orange D. Triple teamed. 
Shot from Tyson is wide. Yeah, see, they're, I mean, they're going to they're cover up the good outside shooters, and um, you know Tyson really hasn't played much this year. And uh, it's amazing how in those situations the ball funnels itself to the uh, poorest offensive player or shooter out on the floor. Howard trying to edge his way in, and he lowered the shoulder. Offensive foul, Frank Howard. Second foul on Howard. Tigers have won four of their last five games and five of their last seven, but they are in need of a serious comeback. And, and uh, there's still enough time, and it needs to happen quickly. So this would be the guy to ignite it. Yeah. Right there for Reed. Good sign right there. We talk all the time about a, a guy who's not had, especially an upper class, and he's not had a great shooting night, but able to shed the prior 35 minutes and give his team a little bit of a boost. Nine points for Reed. He's three of eight from the floor, Mike, and that includes one made three-point basket on three chances for Marquise Reed. And Beheim looks like he wants to go in a mode or run some clock. With, uh, right now, they better get going. Battle. Brissett, shot clock, set two. You, get a run. you can run clock, and that's fine, but you got to give yourself more of a margin for error. Start at about 13 seconds or 12 seconds. This is Reed. Close range. Back-to-back -back buckets. Marquise Reed. A little life now on the Clemson bench. Timeout. Syracuse. And the lead has been whittled down to nine with 5-10 to go in regulation play. And those last two baskets for the Tigers came from Marquise Reed, who is now up to 11 points. It'll be uh, interesting to see, and, uh, you know, they are going to bring Dolajai back out on the floor, but here's here's the last bucket, and again, they get it in. Reed finds himself open in the middle of that zone. Little soft spot, and, you know, Sidibe has made some nice contributions to this team much better offensively with Dolajai out on the floor. 11th time this season to double figures for Marquise Reed. It's bow time, Mike, so that means we're checking the Bojangles fan of the game. And it's this young man inside the dome, the Bojangles fan of the game. There you go. Not wearing orange, though. He stopped short there at the end. Yeah, yeah. That's your move. <laughs> Reed in the second half, seven points. And again, into double digits for Marquise Reed, who averages close to 20 per game. Dolajai into the lineup for the Orange. Nice walk. It's the second time that Hughes has been caught dragging his feet. He the one had the sneaker come off. He the made the three with one <laughs> shoe on. Yeah, get, get the shoes checked. A couple travels. Tigers have scored on their last two possessions with buckets from Reed. He wants to extend the range. It's a three-pointer. Marquise Reed. Yeah, what, uh, what slump. <laughs> three of the last three shots up. One of them a three. Tigers on the 10-1 run. Six-point ball game. Dolajai, the entry pass, the off-balance shot, and the foul against Clemson and Trapp. No, but he's, I, I'm, he used to be guys, he used to try to get as close to that three-point line as possible, but he was a good four feet behind the line on that shot. Second three of the game for Reed. Couple of shots coming up for Dolajai. It's not been the line all that much this year. First attempts of the night from the stripe, Dolajai. Sophomore from Slovakia. And that is attempt number 11 on the year from the line. He's got them both. Important points for the Orange. Yeah. 
Reed. Howard pulls it down. Same spot as the last make on the floor. You got things going. You've just knocked down three shots in a row. Reed now 5 of 11 from the floor. And a couple of three-pointers. Shifty Hughes slapped away by Trapp. Mitchell with some patience. Reed fakes. Hughes came over to help out, knocked the ball away. But a couple of shots coming up for Reed. Foul on Dolajai, and Reed will be at the free throw line for the Tigers. He has uh, come alive here late in this game, getting that jump shot, getting things started, finding its seam in the middle of the zone, then knocks down this deep, deep three. Uh, all of a sudden, a uh, little more life and excitement over on that uh, Clemson Tiger bench, Tom. Marquise Reed. One of two Tigers in double digits, Mike, along with Elijah Thomas, who has 12. We showed you that the last three contests between these two teams have come down to the final seconds, the final shot. Reed at the line. And you are looking at the best free throw shooter in the history of Tiger basketball, percentage wise. Well, and you look at, you know, Mitchell hasn't had a, a huge night tonight, but uh, really struggled one of 10 shooting. But he's plus 80% too, and that's, uh, that's a good formula with your backcourt as you're coming down to end, end game in the bonus. Virginia Tech has posted a victory tonight. You saw Pittsburgh has a lead on Louisville. We've got three minutes and 30 seconds to go in regulation. Six-point ball game. Orange led by as many as 15 in this half. Reset out of the corner. Battle. Leading. Reed corrals it. Wants it right back and has the miss on the layup. The easiest shot he's had in the last five minutes, and he can't get it to go down. Oh, man, Tom, that's, that could be a big swing. That could make it makes it a four-point game if he lays it in. Howard working that clock. Shot clock to nine. Reset, shot clock at three, over Scarra. There is a risk to getting into that running clock mode. You get out of the rhythm, you had been scoring, it's a 15-point lead, but nice bailout by Brissett. Trap behind the line. Try to run it down. Knocked it away from Howard, out of bounds, off the Tigers. Yeah, this is a huge swing. I mean, they, you know, the good, the old give and go, and there is nobody around, and uh, and then the jump shot down the other end, five point swing. Despite that miss, Reed has 16 points. That leads all scores. Four Orange players are in double digits tonight, scoring, Mike. Stay in there. Hughes. Mitchell on the run. Scarra on the wing. It's a three. Brissett the rebound. Sixth of the game for Brissett. And now 140 on the clock. You hear Coach Brownell shouting out, don't foul. Battle. A glance at the shot clock, it reads five. Battle pulls up. Rims out. There is a player down in the paint for the Tigers. Looks like Clyde Trapp down on the floor. Dolajai picked up the foul, Mike, and it is Trapp to his feet. Again, if it, you know if it's a if it's a rebound that you can't get, don't pick up the foul, stop the clock, and put him at the free throw line. Relax, 
Four of eight from the line for Thomas tonight. His team trailing by eight, 119 to go. Newman's in, Mitchell's out. Thirteen times this season. Double figure scoring for Thomas and one of two from the line as Hughes grabbed it. You know, Howard's, Howard's, uh, he's uh, time out, but uh, very solid. Dro drilled himself into the corner that time and into trouble. A seven point game, Tigers and Orange. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Geico. Saving people money for over 75 years. By Food Lion, official supermarket of the ACC. By your local Chevy dealers. And by Lending Tree, official loan shopping partner of the ACC. Inside the Carmelo Anthony Basketball Center, national champs from 2003. And he was the most outstanding player of that Final Four. Jim Beheim's national championship. He's been to that title game, Mike, three times and took home the trophy in 03. And had his heart broken by Indiana and Keith Smart with that jump shot, or it might have been a second title. And that was back in 1987. Also lost to Kentucky in 96 in the title game, but beat Kansas in 03 for the national championship. 111 to go. 58. 51, Orange in front of Clemson. And our performance of the game is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. It's Marek Dolajai for the Orange, Mike. Yeah, really solid all the way around. Also did a lot of the little things out on the floor. I, I just think, you know, I look at their, they're noticeably a better offensive uh, uh, team when he's out on the floor. A couple of steals and a block to add to that line. And the first time this season that Dolajai has gotten to double figures in scoring. And you wonder if uh, they might go a little offense for defense. And uh, with, uh, you know, Sidibe coming in on, on for Dolajai. So Elijah Thomas gets the foul. He's going to have to exit the ball game. Don't forget the game Saturday here on Raycom Sports. Dolajai staying in. Mike, you'll see these Tigers again on Saturday as they take on Virginia. It really is. Uh, and Virginia, one of my favorite teams to watch, Tom, at both ends of the floor. I mean, they really are so connected. And Tony Bennett has done an unbelievable job uh, with that program. I think his style of play when he first got there was was questioned by the fan base. But they are they are scoring more this year. You know, they've found some more offense. Hughes is at the free throw line. Virginia's also 13 and 0 on the season as well. And number two in the country. Read the crossover. Into traffic, Dolajai tipped it. And then Reed tied up Howard. And Reed will get the foul for the Tigers. And, uh, they may, I don't know if they're going to take a look at this and see if that was a flagrant foul. No, that's, uh, he was making the, this a play on the basketball. That's not even close. It's just a common foul. Second block of the game for Dolajai, adding to that stat line. 101 on the clock. Told you that the last three meetings between the teams had been very close. In fact, only five points have separated the teams in their last three meetings, and Syracuse has won two in a row as you well, get another was, look. That was, that was, that was, I, I was looking at the other one. It was the Reed foul. And I still don't know about that one either. That one, this right here was. Now the only thing they may call, if that was, if that, if, if they called that a foul and the clock was stopped and then they could take a look at that, that might be a dead ball technical. Okay.
Jeff Clark is coming over to talk to Mike Jaminski just to clarify. As you take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Orange, they'll be home Saturday against Georgia Tech. And they uh, did that's just frustration by Reed, and they have deemed that a flagrant one foul, so it'll be two shots and the ball. So excessive contact. Yeah, I just I didn't know. I couldn't hear the whistle if the whistle had blown on the Dolge Dolge play before. You know, then that would have been a dead ball technical. The expression from Reed will tell the story tonight for the Tigers, who were, and he was involved in the play, Mike, set the cut the lead to four. He had an open layup and was just too strong off the backboard. Yeah, it just, I don't know, and I don't know why he rushed it either. I mean, didn't, there was nobody around him. Um, and just one of those plays. I mean, he was, he was the one who was responsible for getting them back into the game. You know, he got hot toward the end. And he does lead them with 16 points, but now on the bench with 101 to go and a 10 point difference. And Syracuse will have possession after the free throws from Howard. So the Orange, Mike, looking to extend their winning streak to four games in a row and three in a row here at home with just 53 seconds to go. Tigers created a storm, but the Orange able to weather it. Well, I'm the one I've got circled is the uh, the Duke game here. Uh, it's just an incredible atmosphere when when Duke comes up to play. This crowd really turns out there'll be 34, 35,000 people here. That will be February 23rd against the Blue Devils. As Hughes try to line up another three ball. Just 20 seconds to go now for Mitchell, uncontested layup. But I really think that uh, Jim Beheim has hit on something with uh, Merrick Dolezal in the in the starting lineup. Don't you? Do you, do you agree? Uh, I think this team just they look more active, um, they look better offensively, and they really don't drop off defensively either. He's been in the lineup, four the starting four lineup, four straight four games, wins. four wins. They won them all. 61-53 is our final score tonight from the Dome and the Orange now. 11 and four on the season it is. Career win number 937 for Jim Beheim in his 43rd year. For highlights and musty moments from this game and others, check out the ACC.com. Next telecast, noon Eastern on Saturday. Some will see Virginia Clemson, others get hit at NC State. You've been watching coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference basketball on the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports.